Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from VMworld 2014 here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. I'm Stu Miniman and joining me for this segment is Scott McIsaac who's the CTO of Secure24. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me on. So uh, we always love talking to the, the practitioners, the end users, and service providers are a great one for us to dig into because not only are you a user of technology but you're also a channel for a lot of the, uh, the, the technologies out there, uh, always going through refreshes and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, last time we caught up with Secure24 was uh, you know one of, one of your uh, your guys two years ago here at the show. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, can you give us just a, a quick a quick thumbnail your role at the company and uh, some of the basic speeds and feeds of Secure24? Sure. So um, been with the company for about ten years. Um, you know we've seen it from you know a couple small two owners to we're almost five hundred employees now within the company. Um, you know we leverage heavily leverage VMware technology, Cisco technologies. Um, you know, we're part of their vCloud Air Network, which is an interesting announcement for this, this event. Um, you know, we have, we're focused mostly on business critical applications, so a lot in the Oracle stack, meaning PeopleSoft, JDE, Hyperion. Uh, we do a lot of SAP hosting today, and then your typical Microsoft stack. And then the other part of our business is full IT outsourcing, kind of lift and shift migrations where we manage all the infrastructure for customers up to and through the application. Uh, we typically don't handle a lot of the uh, functional support, but we do up to kind of the basis and down. So. Okay, but so, so the, the mission critical applications yes. you were talking about, this is not, you know, you're not a test dev, try out, any no. kind of things. You've been in the business for a while. You started out as a hosting company then and yep. kind of move into some of the services. Can you talk a little bit about that sure. progression? Yeah, so we've never really been in the infrastructure as a service yep. business. Um, it's been more around the managed services. You know, it started off you know, years ago where we just physical servers in our data center where we put applications on and we help customers you know, manage those critical applications. For them. We're managing things that are, you know, if they're down, they're, um, you know, they're losing, you know, millions of dollars potentially. They can't ship, they can't manufacture what they're built, you know, whatever they make. Um, so it's extremely critical that we have the infrastructure in place to support them. And you know, we've, you know, over the years, it's just been kind of how do we scale that up? How do we scale out to support, you know, larger and larger clients? Um, Again, not in the infrastructure as a service business, so we don't really compete against Rackspace or Amazon in, in that area, more in the managed services, but um, you know, it's just it's how can we how can we build a service offering around our application management? Okay. Now, my understanding, you've got two data centers. Uh, how big are you? How fast are you growing? Yeah. So we have two data centers in Michigan, one in uh, in Las Vegas within SwitchNap. Okay. Um, you know, over the year, I'd say we, last year was about we grew about thirty percent. This year, for next year, we're gonna we're targeting to grow a lot faster than that. Um, it's kind of a you know, this year we focused on our business and kind of. How can we how can we scale ourselves for the future? Um, but yeah, we're we're hosting the two data centers um, within Michigan and Arizona. One is they they one is production for West Coast clients, and then DR to Michigan, and then Michigan is production for East Coast DR to uh, Las Vegas. Okay, and uh, you know you you got the the SuperNAP guys. Uh, you have some government clients there. What who do you focus on? Kind of enterprise, mid range, S and B, government. You um, know, we're kind of all everybody. over the board. I mean, we have today we do some of the health exchanges for for government. So we're in the government space. Um, we host a lot of financial institutions. Um, we host manufacturing. So it's kind of all over the board. Um, you know, our our thing is you know the government stuff is interesting for us because it's high compliancy and that's what we do very well. So I mean, we have dedicated infrastructure for these types of clients that allow us to you know meet um, you know FTI compliance, federal tax information, or um, you know whatever whatever requirement they may have, we can help them with that. So. Okay, great. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what technology you're using. So you said you, you you work with VMware, you work with Cisco. What what what's your gear look like? Yeah. So we're all Cisco UCS um, from the from the top down. VMware is our hypervisor of choice. Um, we're using uh, NetApp as the storage backend. Okay. Um, also, EMC is in there as well, so it's not. We have a two vendor strategy on the storage side just to yep. help us, um, depending on the the use case for what we're doing. So, ha have you done any of the you know FlexPod, VSpecs, VBlock, any yep. of that kind of stuff? We're, we are FlexPod. Um, we're certified as a FlexPod, so that we get that one throat to choke with with the NetApp and Cisco. It's nice. Um, we are not doing any of the VBlock today. Um, mainly because we've just built it ourselves traditionally over the time and doing the engineered system just didn't make sense. Now, going forward, it may. 
So, but right now we're just kind of, we're focusing on the Cisco UCS. Um, we use one KV as the, the virtual switch all tied back into both Juniper and Juniper firewalls and then Cisco on the, the core edge to run our MPLS backbone across the data centers. Okay, and uh, kind, of, kind of your virtual switching and how, how are you doing kind of the physical to virtual uh, networking? Um, so today it's pretty traditional. On the virtual side, we're just using the Nexus 1KV. Okay. Um, and on the physical side, we're using 5Ks, plumb back into 7Ks, and then we use uh, 6509s on the edges to run our MPLS backbone. Okay, and uh, you know, you know how much how fast is your network growing i mean what 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 are your guys it's, doing what keeps them busy um, just trying to keep up with the technology to yeah. be honest with you that's what, it's keeping them busy right now it's you know we're growing you know pretty uh, the way we we build out today is within compute pods or universes is what we we coined them as um, which is essentially just uh, a pair of you know um, core like 5k switches plumbed back into our core 7k's right um, but you know, looking through that, how do we how do we move forward? How do we how do we take it to the next level? What's the our virtual networking director SDN? Um, and today, we just haven't really made a decision on which way we're going to go. The 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 fighting between VMware and Cisco is is causing us to really not make that decision right now because oh. we don't know which one's going to live up. Okay, so so, so the, the the fightings end up freezing the market for you. Yes. Um, so, but is is there a need? Is there is, is, does the value prop sounds good to you? What what's your take on the whole SDN discussion? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely something we. Need need, but again, right now, until we can really figure out which direction the industry is going, we're not willing to make that decision yet. So we're moving, uh, we're taking a subtle step forward. We're moving into more virtual firewalls as opposed to the, you know, your monolithic, you know, big firewalls that everything plums back into. We're going to take a different approach and do uh, firewalls per tenant that allows us to be more scalable. Um, we can replicate that across between data centers. We can do easy failover between our facilities. So it's, it makes a nice model and it'll kind of bridge the gap between the, to when SDN really becomes something that's real for us. Okay, so, so you're the CTO of the group. What, what technologies are you looking at, you know, either here at the show, you know, mm -hmm. what, what are the things that are kind of piquing your interest or, you know, also with Cisco, you know, what, what, what are you looking at? Sure, so today, I mean, we're trying to, the, the big thing we're, we're focusing on is around the application and what can we drive. Uh, virtualized SAP HANA mm -hmm. is huge for us. Yeah. Um, we have customers that want it today. We've had customers that brought us, you know, the IBM appliances or, um, you know, different different models that are that kind of you know plug in a physical appliance, and it just doesn't make sense. The cost point's too high for them. Sure. So, so I, I mean, VHANA only got rolled out earlier this year. So right. are you deploying it yet, or you're in the we're planning not. stages? We're in the planning stages today. So we're actually we're we're trying to build our TDI infrastructure today with with using Cisco as the back end, obviously yeah. using VMware as the hypervisor, and then using NetApp as our as our platform of choice there. Um, again, we'll we'll do some stuff with EMC around it too, but mainly NetApp. Um, but it's, hey, you know, how can we deploy this? How can we leverage it? How can we make sure that it's, we can scale? How can we make sure we can deploy it quick? Um, so it's more of a, a lab for us right now. We do have some dev environments that we're managing today, and, we, and like I said, we have the production devices for using like IBM or another technology there, so. Okay, uh, Scott, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, you know, things like flash and, you know, you know, performance, you know, how, how much is that, you know, something that you guys really focus on and your customers are asking sure. for? It's huge. Okay. Um, if we can drive better performance, lower latency, better system performance for our clients, it's great. Um, so we are looking at the all flash data center, what everyone's calling it these days, right? Um, we've looked at a bunch of different vendors. We have not really solidified our direction there. We've put Pure, we've looked at Extreme. You know, we're talking Tintree and, and other vendors, but we just don't, we don't know who we're going to use yet. It's more of a, a 2015 direction, but we know that we're going to be able to sell it. Um, our customers have done some testing with, with some of the vendors out there, and the performance gains have been just huge. I mean, it's been awesome. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've talked to a number of service providers that put it in as a tier first, and then they try some pieces. Of course, you know, Amazon and the like have mm -hmm. been, been really adopting Flash, so you know, expect to see that more. Yeah, um, our, our, our challenge is that right now a lot of the Flash players aren't the big names, yeah. right? And we'd rather deploy something with a bigger name like an EMC or a NetApp, um, just because if there is a problem, if you go to your customers and say, hey, who are you running? You know, why did you have an outage? Well, it's, it's NetApp, it's EMC, it's whoever, and yeah. they don't look at you and, and say, well, why are you running it on you know, yeah. no name? But in the same sense, some of the, the, the smaller companies today are um, more agile, they're more flexible for us, and, and they're actually, I think, going to be a better, better offering, but <laughs> it's just how do we get there? Yeah, so, I mean, your Cisco customer with, it, with, with lots of UCS, if you looked at, I mean, they've got partnerships with Fusion IO, they have the Invicta yep. uh, piece as part of that. Have, have you been looking at those technologies? We've looked at Invicta a little bit. Um, more, what's intriguing to us is the whole storage blade that they're talking about where we can put a blade right into our UCS environment. Um, but more for specific use cases with our customers. Like if we, if we have a need for extremely low latency, something that's dedicated to them, the storage blade would be great. 
Uh, Fusion I.O., um, again, we had those in-house as well. We just, we haven't seen the need for it yet. Um, we have a couple clients today that it may make a lot of sense. They're doing some SQL clustering and they need extreme uh, high read performance. And from a storage rate, we just can't deliver it. So Fusion I.O. would be how we would how we would direct ourselves there. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, when I look at your customers, you know, I'm sure you have many that have stayed with you for a while. You know, wh where's the growth? You know, how much are they? You, you said you don't compete directly with the Amazons of the world, but are, are they in the conversations that you're having uh, with your customers? Not necessarily. Okay. I mean, our our go-to-market is more around our our touch and feel to our clients um, and the service level that we can really give them because we're you know we're more flexible. We we you know they're not going to be a, a a big fish. Um, in a, or a little fish in a big pond, it's going to be the other way around, so we can give them that, that touch. That's our differentiator in the market today is the, the customer service aspect of it. I mean, I look, look at us, we're more of a customer service company that does technology as opposed to a technology company. Okay, uh, yeah, it's, it reminds me, you know, Rackspace is, you know, the, the fanatical uh, is support there, so, you know, obviously that, that's important. Um, when, when you look at the, the companies that supply technology to you, you know, you work with Cisco, you work with VMware, EMC, NetApp, you're looking at others, uh, you know, you know what's, the, what's the white space in the technology? Where, where do you think they need to go to help support your business and your customers' needs better? Um, flexible, they need to give us the support we need. They need to give us the, the technical resources that can help us build and be um, more scalable. Um, that's been a lot of the challenge we've had is a lot of times we have a lot of smart guys that work for Secure24 and getting to the right people within these vendors has been challenging. Mm. But when we do, I think we, we build an awesome product and we can help scale it, we can help you know, be um, you know, uh, more flexible, um, but it's, it's more about you know, how, do we, how do we drive that with them and how do we build the technology that'll take us forward. Yes, yeah, so, so many of the companies out there, they say you should be able to take our product and you know, scale out, it's scale up, it's you know scale infinitely, right. uh, and, it, and it's real simple, so I guess you're saying it, it's not really there yet. Yeah, not everything. Yeah. Some of the new stuff that we've seen come out, like uh, uh, Pure, or even some of the newer NetApp stuff that they've launched with the WFA and some of their workflow tools, it's easy. It makes it a lot easier for our guys to manage, it makes us a lot easier to scale, but then there's, you know, look at your traditional way of how you provision within a, within a VMAX frame. It's It's been, traditionally very difficult. It's it's time consuming, it's no there's no easy, easy way to automate it. So we need vendors that we can bring in that help us automate the complexity out of our IT. Okay, so so Scott, you know, when I when I look at, you know, I look at VMware, Cisco, NetApp, EMC, they all tell me that the service providers are, you know, one of their Im most important, you know, customers and, and, and you know really turns into a, a channel for their players. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want you to call out anybody specifically, but you know, how are the big guys doing at, you know, meeting your needs and uh, you know making you feel like uh, you know you have a say at the table and helping you deliver for it's, your customers. It's getting better. As we get our name out in the industry, we're getting known within the different vendors and how they can help us, but I mean, the, the, the biggest challenge I still see is around vendors really understanding our business and, ha and having a sales model that understands our business. If a, if a vendor's going to try to sell something and they're going to push away from the cloud because their, their reps aren't compensated on it, then that doesn't work, right? They need to have a model in place that'll allow their reps to push business our way and still get compensated on it, because that money's driving everybody. Um, and I just, they're, they're starting to get there, but they haven't, I haven't seen it fully yet with all the, our, with all the vendors. All right, well Scott, we always position it as a journey to uh, all these technologies, so I really appreciate you uh, helping us unpack uh, you, you know, your business and, and some of the real challenges out in the marketplace. Uh, we will be right back with our next segment with SiliconANGLE TV's coverage from VMworld 2014 right after this quick break.